Hey friends, welcome to Storytime. I'm C and our story today begins, this part of the story anyway, in 1928. Now some of you might know where this is going because that's a very specific date. 1928, a Scottish physician by the name of Alexander Fleming discovered what has come, become known as penicillin. Now penicillin, to most of you, literally when you hear that term, you think antibiotics, you, you know, you think medicine, right? Penicillin is actually mold. Now, a lot of you probably know that. Here's the thing. If we predate ourselves and go back to like the, the bubonic plague era, there was a thing that started happening. The very wealthy were dying of the plague. And those that couldn't afford anything except for moldy bread, they were surviving. Now, how did that come about? Because they were consuming the mold spores that were growing on the bread, maybe scraping it away. But the mold that you see is only a small part of the story. So they were actually ingesting a prophylactic, meaning like a, a maintenance dose. You know, it's prophylaxis is literally referring to um, taking something ahead of the game. So they were eating moldy bread. They were preparing their system to encounter this uh, this plague, this this bacterial infection, and they you know, fared a lot better than the, than the ultra wealthy of that era who were unable, you know, to, to get their bodies prepared in that same way because they were eating fresh bread every day. They, they weren't consuming that mold. That was something that was considered poor and lowly. And so it ultimately ended up costing them quite dearly. Now, let's jump back forward to 1928 when Alexander Fleming officially discovered this penicillin, right? That's, that's what they called this mold spore. Now, the thing with anything that grows in nature, and this is where we're going with this, when something grows in nature, it grows in an extremely complex, I guess, pattern. It, it, it contains multiple hundreds of chemical compounds, and, and they all work together in, in like this synergy within the plant. Now, that's very specific. The plant, whether it's a plant, whether it's mycelium or mushroom spores, they grow like that specifically. They grow like that for the health of the plant. It, it allows the plant or, you know, the mushroom, the, the, the mycelium, whatever it is that you're referring to, it allows that to, to basically become the life it becomes, but much more complex than that. It, it, you know, it allows it to communicate with the other plants around it. It allows it to create like a chemical barrier between itself and the pests that would choose to prey on it. Like plants, they can't pick up a weapon. Plants have no ability to fend themselves off, but for one one of us, uh, like a couple of means, one of which is the, the, like the chemicals that they produce, and that is a very complex set of chemicals. Now, what Alexander Fleming did is what humans tend to do. He came across this active ingredient, this thing in penicillin that he said, this this thing, this thing in the mold, he said, now this is the thing that is working. This is the thing that is working against this bacteria. So he found a way to isolate that. And, you know, as, as far as the story goes, to the best of my knowledge, I wasn't there. But a couple of other scientists actually ended up finding um, uh, like a, a moldy cantaloupe in, in uh, uh, like a rock melon in in uh, a market somewhere and they took it back to their, their lab and then they, they managed to like mass produce this for the war effort. And that's what they say turned the tide on the war was the fact that the allied forces were getting access to this penicillin, which was helping them heal really fast. Whereas the forces they were fighting against the Germans, the, like the Japanese, they, they didn't have that. And so they were succumbing to their injuries. So, that ended up ultimately allowing Alexander Fleming for his discovery to win the Nobel Prize, right? So what we've effectively done is we've taken, and, and here I have, like these were prescribed to me when I had a tooth, like a back molar extracted. They said, you're probably gonna catch an infection, take this. It's like, sure, put it in the cupboard. And it's been there ever since, several years. This is amoxicillin. So it's like, it is a brand name of penicillin. It's a penicillin based antibiotic. Now, these antibiotics, what they've effectively done, they've taken this one ingredient, this, this one chemical from the, the plants or from the mold spores, right? This one thing that they've said, this is the active ingredient. 
They've put it into pill form. They've put it into medicine. They've said, now this is the only thing that works in, in the, the mold. And they've discarded the rest of the mold, the rest of the mycelium, the rest of whatever it is that they're working with. Now, here's the problem with that. What ultimately happens is the bacteria, it starts to recognize this chemical signature of what's being put into the system. And it's like, okay, this, this is familiar to me. All I need to do is literally just change this in my composition. And now all of a sudden, this is useless. It doesn't work anymore. How does that come about so fast? Like even Alexander Fleming started to recognize in his lifetime that what he had created or, you know, managed to, to discover and isolate was becoming useless because the, the bacteria was recognizing it and it was mutating. New forms of bacteria were coming out. That's why we have things like MRSA, methicillin resistant staph, whatever it is. You know, it's, it's, it's basically a staph infection that is resistant to methicillin antibiotics. How does that happen? People get their antibiotics, right? They take some of them, they get through the bottle. There's, you know, still some of the course left. They're feeling better but the bacteria is still in them. The bacteria is on the back foot, it's retreating, right? But it's not dead yet. And because the bacteria isn't dead yet, what it's, they stop taking this, they stop putting it in their system. Next thing that happens, the bacteria then says, okay, we now recognize the weapon you're using. Very cool. All I have to do is change this. It's a very slight change. And bang, it comes back again. Now, You've also killed off your beneficial bacteria, which is one of your first lines of defense in your body, right? Your beneficial bacteria that sits down in your gut, that is one of your defense mechanisms against bacterial infections. You've killed that with the antibiotics. You've wiped it out because they're friendly forces, but the, back, the, the antibiotics don't recognize that. You've effectively wiped that out as well. So now you've got no internal defense systems and the, the bacterial infection that you've been fighting against, it's mutated it's coming back, you might have new symptoms. Bang! You hear it all the time, people on antibiotics, all the time. I've been on antibiotics for six months now and it just doesn't seem to get better. It goes and then it comes back and then it goes and it comes back and I don't know, what it, I don't know what's happening. Well, this is what's happening. Effectively, the pharmaceutical industry is not letting you understand how the mechanism of their product is working. It doesn't matter if it's penicillin, amoxicillin, anything with psyllin is using that mold spore that Alexander Fleming initially found. There might be a slight variation, but there's only, there's only a couple of chemicals in this. And the couple of chemicals that are in it, the couple of active ingredients that are in this, they can be very easily discovered, identified and mutated against by the bacteria that you might be working against. Right? And that's only half the story. Right now we have a viral infection on the planet, apparently. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, but the fact of the matter is, this is useless against virus. When you rock up to the doctor or the hospital with a viral infection, they may very well prescribe you antibiotics. Why would they do that? Because when you have a viral infection, you're also subject to secondary bacterial infection. They give you this as a prophylaxis. You take it by mouth and it's to prepare your body in case that virus opens you to an, it's like a secondary bacterial infection. So they're preemptively giving you something that is literally anti-life. That's what antibiotic is. Anti against biotic, life. It's against life. Right, so this video isn't about you going down the rabbit hole or about us going down the rabbit hole of, you know, uh, the human biome and, and how we, we are literally greater than 50% or something like 56 or 58% bacteria. So we're not even 100% human. We're actually more bacteria than we are human. So when we take something that is an anti or against biotic life, against life pill, we're taking an against life pill, we're actually doing serious damage to ourselves, right? Every time you take a course of antibiotics, think about your internal, that, that defensive system that you've got, that gut flora that you've got, that internal bacterial system that you've got in your, your body that helps you remain healthy. 
think of that like a rainforest. Every single time you take antibiotics against life pills, every time you take that, guess what happens? It's like you've napalmed the forest and it takes at least two years for that forest to grow back to its full splendor again. That's why after a course of against life pills, you are actually a lot more inclined to get sick again faster. Because now we also have this thing where you've got bacteria inside you that is not beneficial to your system. It's hiding. Now, you might think this guy's crazy conspiracy theory. It's, it's true. It's proven. Science has shown this. You have bacteria sitting inside your system right now, just waiting for an opportunity to take hold. It's looking for an opportunity to set up shop. Now, these bacteria that are in your system looking for this opportunity, they might very well be mutated strains. The second you take a course of antibiotics, let's say you have a tooth taken out, right? There's nothing wrong with you, but the dentist prescribes you a course of against life pills and says, you may get an infection, take these just to be sure. So you take these. What you're actually doing is you're destroying your internal defense system, you've napalmed the forest inside of you, all of the critters that would help you fight against an invading force are now gone. These bacterias that are not beneficial to you, that are just looking for an opportunity to set up shop, they are resistant to this because they've already discovered a way to move around it. They've already mutated against it. So you take this, doesn't do anything against them. It, it napalms your rainforest, but it does nothing against that unbeneficial strain. Now, all of a sudden, you get sick because after taking the course of antibiotics, your defense systems are gone. Unbeneficial bacteria has a free reign to set up shop. And next thing you know, doo -doo 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 -doo, they, they've just taken over. Like your whole system is overrun. So now you're actually sick when you weren't in the first place because you had a tooth pulled out and you took antibiotics as a prophylaxis. You see how that starts to work? All right, so now let's talk about the actual solution. For those of you that are connected to the, the natural world, the growing world, you see the greenery around me, I want, I want to share a very specific example. All right, these are anti-life pills. They're against life pills. This, you probably all recognize it. You recognize, see the flower? It stands out. The thing that you'll probably notice the most, you see these little black spiky pegs? Yeah, you know what they are, don't you? They're everywhere. Everywhere on the planet, there's a saying, God puts his most powerful medicine everywhere so that it's always available to you. This, you know what it is. It's got multiple names, depending on where you are in the world. Its actual name is Biden's. This one is a strain of Biden's called Biden's Pelosa. Now, I've had somebody mention something about Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi, if you want to remember it that way, cool. But its actual scientific name is Biden's Pelosa. There's Biden's Alba. There's all kinds of species of this, subspecies. They're all medicinal. They're all super medicinal. The whole plant, every single part, all the aerial parts of the plant, all the way down into the roots, the whole thing is medicinal. You recognize it because when you go for a walk in the park, in the woods, in the fields, these things break away and they stick all over you. They stick all over your dog, they stick all over your socks and pant legs, they stick all over your shoes, they stick to everything. That's because this thing likes to spread. It's one of, whether you God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, it's one of the most powerful medicinal plants that we have available to us. That's why it's everywhere. That's how it works, right? So very easy to identify. Leaves of three is generally leave it be because it means that it's poison ivy, but this guy has this cluster of three leaves as well. You'd use that in conjunction with other identifying factors such as the white and yellow flowers. And of course, what they refer to as the fruit of the plant, which is these little spikes. You see they're falling away already, dropping all over my leg, dropping all over the, the, the floor in front of me, right? This guy, super powerful antimicrobial plant. Now here's, here's where it gets really interesting. If you make medicine 
out of this plant it's not going to hurt your beneficial bacteria how does that work I have no idea it's just one of those miracles of nature it's not an against the life pill it is going to have a massive impact against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria it's probably worth mentioning that there is a difference between those two strains gram positive bacteria has no outer shell but a really thick inner membrane and gram negative bacteria it has a very thin inner membrane but it has a like an outer layer or an outer shell that's why medicines that work on one don't necessarily work on the other this works on both now what makes plant medicines so special as opposed to your against life pills your antibiotics well that's got a single ingredient in it it is an isolated chemical ingredient from mold spores it's literally the one thing that they said is the active ingredient that works that was our downfall as you hu as humans that was our downfall the fact that we isolated or standardized ingredients we took the active chemical component the same thing would happen with this if we said oh wow this is antibacterial and then we pulled it all apart and we discovered that there was a chemical in there and we said this one chemical this is what's doing the antibacterial stuff and we put that into a pill it would do the same thing very quickly whatever we were using it against would identify that uh, that chemical and it's done it finds a way to mutate around it but when you use this the way that nature intended for us to use it the whole plant even if you're only working with the leaves there is still hundreds of all kinds of alkaloids polyphenols there's multiple chemicals in this and those chemicals they all work together in synergy to create a solution that something that wants to invade your body like a bacterial infection this antiviral as well they effectively use this in some of the African countries for the AIDS virus they're effectively using it it's overcoming secondary infection associated with HIV this has multiple multiple chemical components and when they all work together there's simply no way for an invading force doesn't matter whether it's bacterial or viral there's simply no way for it to understand it and mutate against it so that's effectively what I've got right here this is a tincture that I made from this plant now I recently en ended up with uh, a strep throat. I've been overtraining with, well not overtraining. I've been training smart, but I had a, I had a race, and I just allowed my system to get a little bit run down, and I got strep throat. This is all I've been taking. This is what the doctors would have given me. They would have given me against life pills, for something that is very easily overcome. Just by drinking a dropper full of this three times a day, which is literally this macerated in high proof alcohol for 40 days, that's all this is. It's making use of this whole plant and all of its alkaloids and all of its chemical components. By, by, by taking something like this for something that was really easily overcome, I would open myself to infection after infection I would napalm my internal forest it would take the next two years for that to grow back properly and during that time I'm susceptible to everything it's not a great time for us to put ourselves in that position this is how things mutate the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want you to know this they don't want you to know this because you have no way of doing this at home. You have no way of making this at home. You can't do this. You are reliant upon them when you do this. You can do this in your house. 
very, very easily. You, when you know what you're doing, super easy to do. You have the ability to look after yourself. Nature is here to help you with that. It's here to provide for you. So that's it. If you've, if you've watched this right to this point, you haven't dropped out, thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to share it with your friends. This information needs to be shared. Like it, it's something that is going to benefit somebody out there. I have made videos previously on how to make tinctures. Go back through and, and check them out. If you need help with any of it, reach out to me. I'm a pretty friendly guy at, at times. <laughs> but seriously, we're all in this together. I don't care about the political connotations of that statement. Bullshit. We're all in this together. If you need help with any of this, you want to talk about it, you want to chew through any of it, you're trying to make something and you're not sure what the steps are, let me know. We can do this together very, very easily. Everything out here that grows is here to help you. They want you to believe that this is a frightening place. It's not. There's nothing frightening about nature. Nature is your ally. You're a part of it. You are a part of this natural world. The natural world is here to help. These guys, they want you to to stay away from this. They want you to be afraid of this. They want you not to go out here because when you start sitting quietly with this, you start to recognize things. There is a language in this and that language is largely lost to the planet. But when you start to sit quietly with it, you start to hear it. You start to understand it. And that language will help you thrive in a way that you never have before. So again, thank you if you've watched this to the end. I really appreciate you. Share it around. It's beneficial information. Like it's going to help you. It's going to help someone at some point. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you all soon.